as any form of media progresses and matures, it starts standing on its own, having its own special nuances and tropes that define it. These unique quirks can themselves begin to morph and shift, taking on a life of their own, and eventually self-referential material will start to find its way amongst a crowd of offerings, allowing for both critique and celebration of a beloved art form. Video games are no different, and there are now several titles at play with and subvert player expectations, or just outright reference video games and their culture in either a serious or comedic way. Sometimes this is meant in good fun, and other times they bring up important thinking points on specific theming in gaming. Either way, we've gathered just a few such titles together to take a look at today. While some of these games are a bit more directly about specific games or genres than others, they do all share references to the industry or in-jokes that gamers are sure to appreciate. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great video games about video games. Number 10. Our World is Ended the first game on our list is admittedly a bit more video game adjacent than most of the others. However, the cast of characters are all members of a small indie studio, so we'll allow it. Visual novel Our World is Ended was first released for the Vita in 2017, and follows seven developers of incredibly dysfunctional studio Judgment 7. Players take on the role of exceedingly average newbie, Reiji Gozen, who is a part-time assistant for the team. Sekai Wari is a team leader and primary coder, but generally appears lazy and uncaring, though at the start of the game, he is working to develop an augmented reality headset. Unfortunately, something goes wrong, and the kit ends up creating a virtual reality duplicate of the real world. This, understandably, leads to a lot of problems, including mysterious figures who've been sent in to kill them, and the constant threat of the world self-destructing as well as the uncomfortable knowledge that death in the virtual world means death in real life. Luckily, the developers are able to hack the world just as they could any other computer program. Our World is Ended most likely won't appeal to those but the most dedicated of visual novel fans, but its surreal other world is a fun meta sci-fi twist on the genre. Number 9. God Medicine Fantasy Sakai no Tanjo God Medicine Fantasy Sakai no Tanjo, or God Medicine Birth of a Fantasy World if you want to get rough translation about this, was a 1993 Japan exclusive Game Boy title, and can be quite hard to get proper information on. We'll have to forgive our writer then, as she may know Japanese, but she graduated university more years ago than she'd care to admit, and her skills are a bit rusty. From what we can tell, the story revolves around the game of Phantom, a highly anticipated upcoming RPG. However, before the game can be finished, the company building burned to the ground. At the same time, a rift between the real world and the game world ripped open, allowing Phantom's heroes and a powerful demon to cross over. Soon after, the main characters stumble across the real world version of the portal themselves. After losing a battle with the demon, the heroes of the game pass on their souls and skills to the kids, who then have to hop into the world of Phantom and defeat the evil with in. No, not that one. God Medicine appears to be much like any other RPG of the time, the main comparison being the classic Dragon Quest series. There is a fan translation available, so anyone who enjoys classic RPGs should consider checking this one out. Number 8. Kid Chameleon there have been many stories about AI and robots that are able to achieve sentience and take over human society. The only way it could be made worse is if, say, a game was able to actually transport people into it and trap them there. Well, our next title is about exactly that. In 1992 Mega Drive platformer Kid Chameleon, players follow the titular kid, who is actually named Casey, as he fights his way through a hologram-based game. This large room-sized arcade title was incredibly popular, but eventually the final boss was able to escape and capture the kids who played by defeating them in the game. The chameleon part of Kid Chameleon's name refers to his ability to take on a multitude of forms by putting on different masks that can be found through the game's extensive roster of 103 levels. These allow him to progress through the multiple areas, avoiding obstacles and attacking foes. Each form has its own HP and abilities, and makes the gameplay impressively varied. Despite an initial lukewarm reaction from critics, the game was ported and included in a number of Mega Drive collections in the 2000s. If nothing else, it certainly is an interesting little curio from gaming history, and makes me glad that AI isn't all that powerful yet. Number 7. Game Dev Tycoon have you ever wanted to make your own games, but haven't been able to get into the coding side of things as much as you'd hoped? Thankfully, Game Dev Tycoon is here to help. 
As the name suggests, game dev tycoon is placed taking on the role of a developer who's just starting to establish their company as PCs become more popular and universal. They start as just one person in a garage, but if they're careful and successful, and actually listen to players, they'll be able to gain employees and a ton of money. The best way to do this is to balance all different components of the game as much as possible. Initially, players will choose a topic, genre and specific device to develop for. And once that has been established, they choose which aspects of the title will need more development time in order to create the best game possible. This will only get more complicated as time goes on, with different age ratings, consoles and game engines adding themselves to the mix. The wealth of options allows players to come up with all sorts of different combinations, even potentially recreating actual games and seeing how they stack up to their real-world counterparts. Just don't let any success go to your head. Number 6. Arcade Spirits Set in a world where the crash of 83 never occurred and arcades still reign supreme, 2019 comedic dating sim Arcade Spirits lets players navigate a complicated world of business ownership and romance. Or not, as players can opt for purely platonic relationships if they wish. After a particularly long run of bad luck, the main character downloads a seemingly sentient self-help app, and after analysing what they want out of life, the programme arranges a job interview at a local arcade, the Funplex. From this point forward, the player is treated to a roller coaster of a story that is a self-indulgent and unapologetic celebration of arcades and the sense of community they inspire. Even though the relationships are centre stage, the arcade cabinets themselves play a large role in the story as well, with many in-jokes and references to classic titles scattered throughout the game, and even an odd to the obscure urban legend of Polybius at one point. Most of the seven other players are also linked to a specific aspect of gaming. There's the eSports competitor, the score chaser and the tech whiz, all of whom present different sides of the gaming scene. Even if the heyday of arcades was a bit before your time, Arcade Spirits is a treat for anyone who enjoys gaming nostalgia. Number 5. Moon – Remix RPG Adventure the 1997 PlayStation anti-RPG Moon Remix RPG Adventure may not have made it out of Japan for over two decades, but its genre-bending storyline proved to be more influential than anyone would have guessed. As the game begins, it seems the player will take on the role of a small boy playing an RPG called Moon on his game station. However, after a fast-forwarded look at a hero exploring a seemingly normal RPG world, the boy is sucked into his TV after he's turned the game off and gone to bed. From this point, the boy instead takes on the role of one of the inhabitants of the in-game village, and finds that he's been tasked with taking care of the animals the hero has killed throughout the opening sequence. Their corpses still litter the world, and their souls have to be collected and sent to the moon, which allows the boy to level up his love. Moon Remix RPG Adventure is one of the major influences behind the enormously popular Undertale, with developer Toby Fox citing it and its themes as inspiration for his own anti-RPG. After the success of Undertale, the game has been localised and released on Switch, PS4 and PC. Anyone who's a fan of genre subversion should be over the moon that this title is finally available. Number 4. The Magic Circle Indie adventure The Magic Circle may be a relatively unknown title, but it features contributions from several major names in the industry, including some developers of Bioshock and Dishonored, as well as prolific voice actor Ashley Birch. It also happens to include yet another game within a game. Players take on the role of a newly hired QA tester, who in turn is playing as the hero in a game that's been stuck in development hell for 20 years. The game is being prepared for a live demo, but is far from finished because none of the developers can agree on how it should function. This also means that, despite being a hero in a fantasy RPG, the player initially doesn't have any skills available to them, and it takes almost no time at all to play the current build of the game, as there's almost nothing there to QA test in the first place. After completing this playtest, the player is brought back by a rogue AI from a previous build of the game, who grants them various powers in order to complete and hopefully eventually escape the game. It may not be perfect, but this satire of the gaming industry is a great gem for anyone who likes to follow the occasionally chaotic development process. Number 3. Nanashi No Game the 2008 DS horror adventure Nanashi No Game, also known as The Nameless Game, wears its inspiration on its sleeve, taking many of its story beats from popular horror film The Ring. Rumours circulate about a cursed unnamed video game for the twin system, or TS handheld game system. Very subtle that, and supposedly anyone who plays the game will die within seven days if they don't get around to completing it first. The unfortunate university student protagonist discovers that they have been sent this cursed game one day by fellow student Adaka who has been absent from class for quite some time. After meeting with Odaka's girlfriend and learning that she was sent the game as well, the player goes to check on him in his home, only to discover that he's been a victim of the game. 
Gameplay consists of two separate portions, wandering the real world over the course of an in-game week and playing the cursed game itself, which is presented as an 8-bit RPG. As players progress, they venture further into the world of the spooky game and begin to unravel its mysteries, both in the real world and the virtual one. Unfortunately, this is another Japan-only title, but thanks to a fan translation, the spooks live on. Maybe play it with the lights on, though. Number 2. Super Hot Superhot may have been well known for, and strongly advertised on, the basis of its time moves when you do mechanics and its distinctive visual style. What those who haven't played it might not realise though, is that there is a complicated meta-narrative adding to the whole experience. Upon starting the game, players are presented with a DOS-like interface, where they will occasionally receive messages from their friend asking how they like Superhot.exe, a leaked copy of an upcoming game. Both of them are seemingly playing different versions of the programme, with different experiences and levels. This would generally indicate some sort of roguelike element to the fictional game, but the answer is more complex than that. As players progress, it becomes obvious that someone or something is watching them play through the game, encouraging them to stop or else, with ominous threats and allusions to severe consequences for their in-game actions. This adds a whole different level of tension to the experience, beyond the simulation of getting shot at and generally attacked by hordes of foes, and can lead to some pretty harrowing scenes. Thankfully, the VR version omits some of these, but Regardless, the experience is unlike any other. And number one, CrossCode. Retro-inspired action RPG CrossCode can be a bit hard to explain, but there's no denying that it wouldn't exist at all if the gaming elements of the story were stripped out of it. Players start out controlling Shizuka, as she battles through monsters to try and get to her brother and rescue him from imprisonment. Shortly after she reaches him though, he passes away, and after a bit of a jump, players reawaken on a cargo ship as a new character, Leah, who has no voice and no memories. Several others are on the ship and attempt to help her regain what she has lost, the most prominent of whom is the mysterious figure called Sergei Asimov. He informs Leah that in order to regain her memories, she has to play fictional MMO crosswords and fight her way through various dungeons and bosses in the same way she did before the memory loss. As she does so, she not only learns more about herself, but her companions from the ship and the mysteries surrounding the game and how her true nature relates to it all. The combination of the satisfying combat and complex storyline proved to be a hit amongst players, making CrossCode one of the best ways to experience a game within a game.